Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Uniformation GK2. This is a solid AK printer with a built-in resin heater and air filter. It also has a really nice flip-up lid and a slide and lock vat that's really easy to remove. Let's get right to it. Here I have the GK2 out on the table. The first thing we have here is our accessory box. As well as an extra screen protector as well as an NFAP. And next we have our quick start guide and our uniformation slicer guide. And then we have some pieces of paper for leveling. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip up the lid and remove the foam from inside. And here on top we have our carbon air filter. Uniformation sells these on their site once you need to replace them. Now we can remove this block of foam which contains a print platform. I really like the print platform on the Uniformation GK2. It's not like most resin printers where the resin will actually go over the bed. The resin can only go up so far on the side here making it really easy to clean once you're done. Now we just have to remove the two pieces of foam and then I can get everything laid out on the table and we can take a look. Here we have everything laid out on the table. Here's the air filter that we need to install. Next we have a few resin filters, as well as a few pairs of gloves. And next we have a scraper. This is one of the best scrapers I've ever used for resin printing. It's really great at cleaning out the vat. And then we have a small collapsible funnel for replacing resin in the bottle. And then we have a nice pair of side cutters, as well as our USB thumb drive. Next we have our screwdriver for adjusting the bed level. And then our standard set of Allen keys. And then we have a nice sturdy scraper for removing prints from the print platform, as well as some extra screws for the vat. And then we have a pair of tweezers. Next we have the GK2 manual, with everything you need to know to get it set up and running. As well as a quick look at the installation of the vat. And then we also have a quick start guide for the Uniformation Slicer. And then again our screen protector and a replacement NFAP. And then we have the build platform. I really like the design of this platform. It doesn't really get dirty, but at the time a print's done, the sides are pretty much clean. The first thing we have to do is just install our air filter, and this simply slides and locks into place. Just like so. Next we just have to remove the tape holding the bed locking in place. I really like this setup, you just have to flip the switch up and down to lock the print platform into place. Now we can go ahead and remove the resin vat. All you have to do is slide it forward and then lift. It also comes with a lid for the vat as well which is a really nice touch. The fat bunnies are really easy to replace as well. All you have to do is remove the frame, lay the new piece on the back, and then re-secure it. And then we have the resin fat. It holds a total of 700 grams of resin, which is plenty for most prints, but it's also really easy to add more resin mid-print with this printer. Now we just have to remove the shipping plastic off the screen. It comes with one screen protector installed. So if you ever have any problems, and you need to remove it due to spilt resin, there is an extra one in the box. Now I'm just going to install the bed and check the level. You simply slide the bed into place and push the lever down, and it's locked. The GK2 comes leveled from the factory, 
but I always suggest checking a level once you get a new printer. You never know what might happen in shipping, so I always find it best to double check. Once we have our pieces of paper in place, we're just going to home the print platform. And then once it's home, we're just going to go around and check each of the four pieces of paper to see if there's any tension or if they slide out. Once it's in position, you're going to go around and type a tug on each of the pieces of paper. They shouldn't slide out. The first and the third corner were good. The fourth and the second corner are loose, so we'll definitely have to level the platform before we start a print. Leveling with the GK2 is a little bit different than other resin printers. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go around and loosen the four outer screws. This will allow the platform to drop. And as you could see, as I was loosening these off, the platform dropped. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go around and loosen the four inner screws. These are the stop screws that lock it into place. Next, double check that you have free movement on the bed. Now we can go ahead and hit home. Once the bed has finally hit the home position, you're going to go around and you're going to tighten the outer four screws first. You have to be careful not to over tighten these. You just want to tighten them until there's a bit of tension and give them a little extra turn. Next, we can go to the inner screws and tighten them. These will lock the bed into its position. I always like to work in a diagonal pattern whenever I'm tightening anything. Now, once we have all the screws tightened, we're going to go ahead and take one of those little tabs of papers from before and then we're going to fold it over on itself twice. Next, you're going to use a screen to raise the platform. Next, you're going to go ahead and hit the home button. Once it's finished homing, we're going to give a little pull on the paper. If it doesn't slide out, we're in a pretty good position. Now we're going to raise the bed up a little bit and check each of the corners.
and finally our last corner. Just give this a little tug, and if it's snug, we're good to go. Alright, now we can raise the bed platform. Next, all we have to do is basically install our resin vat, load some resin, and try our print. And then here we have a nice slide and log fat. And we're ready to go. Now we can power it up and take a look at the screen. One thing I like about the Uniformation GK2 is they use a really simple menu system that's easy to read and navigate. And here we are at the main screen. We have a disk, a built-in storage, and a data cleaning option. And then on the bottom, we have our different tabs, such as our Z-axis movement, exposure test, fat cleaning, and system update. Next, we have a few settings, just the language settings and the system settings. In here, you can change the name of the printer, adjust the volume, and turn your heating off and on, and adjust the temperature. I usually keep mine set between 25 and 30. And then finally we have our information tab. This has our device information, our use information, as well as our technical support and error log. I really like how it keeps track of use. Once you replace a FEP, you have to remember to go back in and to reset that. Now when it comes to slicing for the GK2, I like to use TutorBox. Right here I have TutorBox Pro, and these are the settings I use for all of my prints. The only thing that changed was the exposure time, from 1.7 to 2.2 based on the resin I was using. And here we have some results. This is the Mammon bus from Photos Mint. I really like how this came out on the GK2. The details are sharp and clear, and AAA does a really good job of smoothing out the curves. Just the amount of detail that was achieved on the armor pieces is really nice on the GK2. Next, we have the armor, also from Photos Mint. These two busts took about four hours each to print, and I was really surprised about how well they came out. There's a lot of detail and they're really clean looking prints. The GK2 does a really good job. Next we have Sandman from B3 to Zerg. I really like this print. There's a ton of detail and GK2 did a good job before bringing it out. Even all the little ornate details on the base really stand out. Next, we have a zombie Superman head, also from B3 to Zerk. The amount of detail on this print really blew me away. The GK2 did an amazing job bringing out the detail on this model. And finally, we have a zombie Batman, also from B3 to Zerk. This one really blew me away, the amount of detail in his cowl and even on his face. The AA did an amazing job of making sure everything was clean, yet sharp. And finally we have a couple of miniatures. If you're looking for a really solid, great AK printer, I suggest you check out the GK2. I've really liked my time with it so far. And also be sure to head over to Facebook and check out the new Studio Zombie 3D Facebook group. See what's coming into the studio for review and what's coming up. Also just pop in to say hi. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. 
Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.